Good afternoon. My name is Alina Shautsova. I am an immigration attorney from Brooklyn, New York. In today's Legally Speaking seminar, I would like to speak with you about how to prepare for a consulate interview after your I-601A waiver was approved. As you're probably aware, I-601 waiver is a waiver that allows you to apply for it and wait for a decision on the waiver while you're in the United States. But it's really used while you are overseas applying for, an, for a visa. You would apply and would want to apply for I-601A waiver in only one situation, when the only problem that you may have in the United States after you leave the country is your unlawful presence during your stay in the United States. In all other situations, let's say prior deportation order or um, false claims of U.S. citizenship, or fraud or misrepresentation or some criminal um, convictions, I-601A waiver is not going to help you. So, you received your appointment for an interview for your immigrant visa. You are that close of becoming a permanent resident. What do you need to do to make sure you will become a permanent resident? First of all, you need to review the documents that you submitted or your lawyer submitted for you uh, in uh, support of I-601A waiver. Do not be lazy. You have to read every single piece of paper because those documents will be available to the consulate officer and he or she will review them. Any declarations that you submitted, any records that you submitted in support of the waiver, you need to know what was in there. You reviewed the documents. Okay, that's number one. Number two, you need to sit down and prepare, preferably with a lawyer, how you're going to be answering uh, different questions. The lawyer cannot coach you, but the lawyer may explore different areas that the consulate officer will be asking you, so you are prepared. For example, um, of course, the officer will first go over your um, application, and then the officer needs to check whether or not you are otherwise admissible into the United States what the officer may be interested in. Number one, have you ever claimed to be a U.S. citizen? Some people get confused. They, they say, oh, have I ever applied for U.S. citizenship? It didn't work out? Or how do I answer this question? Well, what officer is aiming at is where, if there was a time when you said or tried to say that you were a U.S. citizen. For example, have you ever used a U.S. citizen passport? to enter the United States and the passport was not, of course, it was you were not a citizen. Have you ever claimed to be a U.S. citizen on form that's called I-9 in connection with your employment? Have you ever used any documents to prove that you are a U.S. citizen in connection, let's say, with the application for driver's license? Oh, this is actually an interesting area. If you answer yes, the question and the issue will become very, very complicated. Currently, some consulates denying people entry into the United States and they find them to be inadmissible because they used, uh, let's say, a U.S. Um, passport card or things like that, a birth certificate, in connection with the application for driver's license. But it's actually a very fact-specific situation. And there is case law that states that if a person used uh, some documents where they say that they are U.S. citizen, not in connection with immigration or federal benefits, but in connection with some other applications, like application for a loan with a bank, for example, that was found not to be a problem and not to be ground to be uh, found a person inadmissible due to false claim of a U.S. citizenship. Now, things like that are very fact-specific, and you need to speak with them with a professional to make sure that you will not uh, f you will not find yourself uh, stuck in your home country after you thought that you were that close to your green card. All right, another area that can be tricky is crimes that you committed but nobody knew about them. Hmm. Well, if we think about that, that m much of our conduct somebody may qualify as a crime. Let's say, I don't know, you spanked your child, okay? And, um, or you forgot to pay for something in a store. 
What do you do with things like that? How do you answer those questions? Well, those questions, again, are very, very fact-specific. If your actions did not rise to the criminal level and you didn't really, really beat up your children, which I'm sure you didn't, then, of course, you didn't commit a crime for which you, you were not prosecuted. But there are other instances where it's hard to answer the questions correctly because you just don't know. And I will tell you that many lawyers do not know and judges. So those are the situations where you really need to be prepared for. For example, um, different uh, criminal... Um, uh, criminal adjudications of conduct that are not a conviction. How do you answer those questions? Let's say you received an ACD in New York. Were you convicted or you were not convicted? How do you answer that? Uh, well, it's actually going to depend on the record uh, that is in criminal court. And that record will have to be reviewed by an attorney for you to be able to answer the question about conviction correctly. Another area that can be uh, tricky, use of false names, okay? Uh, use of names that are not yours. Um, hmm, have you ever legally applied to change your name? Do you have nicknames? What happens in situations like that is that usually, usually, before you file for your waiver and on all the forms, if you ever used voluntarily or involuntarily different names you have to disclose them to avoid possible accusations that you use some kind of different names and you didn't um you, you try to um you know deceive the united states immigration uh for example um some people have different spellings in their passports and in different documents their names are spelled differently. They did not leave that spelling. The government decided to spell their names differently. Sometimes, let's say you were picked up for some kind of criminal uh, charges, um, the officers will misspell your name and this misspelling uh, will not be discovered years later and you would have like a small criminal record but under a different name. So you need to turn every stone Okay, when you prepare for the consulate interview, you need to review every record to make sure that those little omissions, mistakes, uh, will not be uh, used against you. Okay, so that's very, very important. That's why you need a professional to prepare with you. Well, I hope this little video was uh, helpful for you. And if you have more questions, visit our website www.shatsova.com. Thank you.